In this episode of the Private Pilot Podcast, we're gonna talk about how to get the most out of your flight lessons. Hey, Missouri Nation, Jason here. First podcast of 2022 coming off of the phenomenal, there's no other way to put it, phenomenal 31 day safer pilot challenge. A show of hands, uh, who was 31 for 31 on the 31 day safer pilot challenge? If for some reason you're hearing my voice and you have absolutely no clue what I'm talking about, Every single day in the month of January, we posted one video. It's 31 days in January. We called it the 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge with the goal, with the prayer to save lives, to make you safer, smarter pilots in absolutely everything that we do. That is on the m YouTube and the m Facebook page, as well as m If you go to our library of resources there, you can see that. If you're listening to this many, many years in the future, just remember, we do a 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge every year. So there might be a few Januaries you get to go back and work on. So actually, I've done one now, uh, 2022, 2021, and prior to that, it was many years. So there's three 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenges out there for you to catch up on and work on. Thanks so much for letting us take a little break during the holidays uh, and during, of course, the 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge. I don't want to fill you with way too much uh, content and everything else with that, but just so excited to be back to the podcast, the private pilot podcast, one of four podcasts that we produce. And I want to spend, and you know, these podcasts are always short and punchy and to the point. Thank you for all the kind reviews. Um, And and you know what, thank you for even the reviews that help us to get better and better. I read every single one and I can always look and see if there's a hint of truth in something, we can utilize it to get better and better. It's true of your aviation, it's true of your business, it's true of life. Anyways, I wanna talk with you today about how to get the most out of your private pilot flight training. We're in a series now actually called The Flight Lessons where the Fly With Jason sweepstakes winners had the opportunity to come fly with me in Naples, Florida, at a flight school that my uh, lovely lady Magda and I were so blessed and thankful to be able to invest in called Rexair. So we're able to invest in Rexair, bring these winners to Rexair to fly with myself, um, and they just did an amazing, amazing job. And it just really got me thinking of getting back to the basics. Getting back to the basics. So uh, a sneak preview of what's gonna come out in episode two. Episode two, I fly with Chris and Cindy Stater. They're actually the winners of our um, co-pilot category, which is where Chris is the certificated pilot, Cindy is his wife, and Cindy won the flight lesson, basically the discovery flight. We put Chris in the back, which was fun, in his Piper Dakota at six foot eight. We had to put him back there. But it painted such an interesting picture how I could use to go back with my student pilot eyes and look at things. For example, I was working to help Cindy be truly an asset to Chris as they're doing all aspects of aviation. Not just this morbid, something happens, how do I take over and help my spouse? There's a component of that, right? We all wanna know how to be safer, smarter pilots, but how can we be more efficient together? So I remember a moment in particular where I was telling Cindy, we're, we're out, you know, Chris was pre-flight in the airplane. I said, hey, Cindy, an area you can help with pre-flight is just removing the chocks. And I remember she looked at me and she said, Jason, what are the chocks? And I thought, you, when you're in, a, and maybe you can relate to this as a student pilot, as a private pilot, what are the chocks? You know, here I am 10,000 hours later, and you just, you take the word chocks, which doesn't really make sense. I always tell people chocks and blocks, they rhyme. The word chocks doesn't really make sense in our, in our vocabulary. And you, and you tell these people um, to remove the chocks and they have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. So putting my student pilot eyes back on, you may need to make sure you're asking the appropriate questions. How many, and this is why I share this, how many of you would have the humility to say, what are the chocks? 
right? It's like when you're in a room of people and someone tells a story and they go, Who ha who's never heard this story before? And you're looking around like, if other people raise their hand, I might raise my hand. That's a fear of man. And we don't want, we don't want to, to fear what anybody else thinks about us, right? We have to avoid that at all costs. This is aviation. This is truly life or death. You as a private pilot, this is a different take on getting the most out of your flight train. Typically, I share the message of do your ground school first. I hope you use m 0 as online ground school. And, and I, I'm, again, we'll get, we can cover that briefly there. But I want to take a different take on what I traditionally share. And here's the whole point of this. Never be afraid to ask the question. You hear them say there's no stupid question. I, I, I believe that. What are chocks? Just ask. Why, why are we practicing slow flight? What is the purpose of slow flight? Um, why are we flying today? Because I typically wouldn't fly. It's kind of beyond my personal. Any question is fair game. What made you decide that today was a go versus a no-go day? Because I'm kind of somewhere in between. Asking the right questions, the powerful questions. I've alluded to this early on, back to me, it still, still is with the topic of getting the most out of your flight training. Asking the right questions of your CFI, even during the interview process, can prove to be so beneficial. Asking the right questions like, hey, um, what's your schedule? Because I work Monday through Friday, nine to five. I can only fly on the weekends. Are weekends good for you? Yeah, weekends are great for me. Or no, I, don't, I, I want to take off on weekends. I give this example a lot. I mean, flying for me early on was my job. I flew Monday through Friday, not nine to five. It was seven to seven. It felt more like I was, I was uh, you know, my mother was a nurse and worked seven to seven shifts in the hospital. I, I feel like I'm working those kind of shifts sometimes. Um, I wanted to take my weekends off. So if a student came to me and said, I really, I can't do evenings, I can only do weekends. No, I really, I, I can't do weekends. I'm sorry, that, that's my time to rest and recharge as well. Asking the powerful questions. Hey, what are your career goals? This is not, not, I'm not talking to you, the private pilot. I'm talking to you asking your instructor, what are their career goals? Because if your instructor is trying to get a job elsewhere or at 1,400 hours waiting to kiss the magic 1,500 hours, you're not going to have that instructor very long. And they may be a great, great instructor, but I, I'd rather you with a brand new instructor than, than with this amazing seasoned instructor that's only, only going to be with you for a short season. There's nothing wrong with a new, brand new instructor, by the way. Sometimes this, the the CFIs fresh out of school are some of the best, some of the most passionate. They may not have all the psychology of teaching and learning down, but boy, are they passionate and they know the facts. And they were just there themselves. Something to ponder. What are some other great things we can do to get the most out of our flight train, especially at the private pilot level? One of those things is how frequently are you flying? How frequently are you flying? Let me give you an example. If you think you're gonna earn your private pilot certificate by flying once a month, you're fooling yourself. You're telling yourself a lie. If you think you're gonna save money on your private pilot certificate by flying once a month, you're telling yourself a big lie. Oddly enough, so there's something called spaced repetition. We need a little bit of space between lessons, but not too much. Oddly enough, the ideal between that is 24, 48 hours, I'll let you push into 72 hours, somewhere around there. In a perfect world, you'd fly Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, you can do some ground school on Tuesdays and Thursdays, take the weekend off to fully recharge. That's like an ideal situation. I realize not everybody has that schedule, but could you fly twice a week? And by twice a week, I don't mean Saturday and Sunday. I mean, if, if you have to do weekends, can you take off early on a Friday and sneak into Sunday? At a minimum of twice per week, because those of you who are in aviation know you book two lessons a week, you usually only end up flying one of them because of weather or maintenance or someone's sick or whatever it is. That's why I like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So if someone cancels a lesson or weather cancels a lesson or maintenance cancels a lesson, you still have two other lessons on the books that you're working on. You still have ground school you can go work on. You still have sim time that you can go do. That's another point people always ask. Jason, is there a benefit of using a flight simulator early on in my private pilot training? The answer is absolutely yes, as long as you're using it appropriately. 
Is it a home-based sim or is it a sim at your flight school? If it's a sim at your flight school, it's probably pretty decent. If it's a home-based sim, it depends on your actual setup. Either way, now the flight school sim, you can usually log and you, it depends on how that sim is certificated. Your home-based sim, you're not going to be able to log, but you'll log the experience up in your head, so that's, that's fine. What sort of things can I practice on my flight simulator to get the most out of my private pilot flight training? especially even early on. I know many of our ground school members will do their ground school while flying on their home base sims. And I encourage them to practice things like VOR tracking and navigation. Super, super, not difficult to practice in the plane, just expensive. It's easy to hit the pause button, drag yourself all around on the map and practice VOR tracking and navigation. Um, another great thing I like to practice is just the simple instrument scan. Hold me straight and level. Give me a level left hand turn. Give me a level right hand turn. And although you don't feel the airplane and the controls aren't always as realistic here, make the instrument panel big and just focus on the instruments and practice scanning your instruments. I know you're saying, but I'm trying to be a private pilot. All that is true. However, there's still a large instrument scanning component to all of this. You've seen this as we demonstrate our perceptual learning modules like we did on day, I wanna say 14 maybe. Uh, of the 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge. Maybe sooner, I'm not sure. It was earlier, though. Perceptual learning modules, they're called. You can find them in the M0A Online Ground School. Now, as we're practicing, let's say on a sim, we're knocking out our ground school, life is looking good, we're getting our regularly scheduled lessons, we're getting plenty of sleep, we got the family life balance going good. The last critical piece we need to touch on here today is time and money. It's just a fact. You, if you don't have the time and the money combined, it takes both, you, I hate to say this, but you just will not become a private pilot. If you have the money but don't have the time, it, it doesn't matter. You can't buy your way into a private pilot certificate. If you have the time and don't have the money, you can't volunteer your way. I mean, that, that'd be a little bit easier than having the money and not having the time. It'd be easier to volunteer your way, your time, into earning your private pilot certificate without the money uh, than it would be to have the money and not have the time. Of those two pieces, you're gonna think I'm a little crazy, but I'm gonna tell you time, it's a 60-40. The time is 60% 60, 60 um, more important. 40% is the financial aspect. That's why I say that, you can have all the money, but if you don't have the time to commit to it, you just will not become a pilot. Certainly not a safe pilot. You cannot go on eBay and purchase yourself a pilot certificate, I don't care how much money you have. Nor can you buy good decision making either, right? That's one of the hardest things to actually teach. So how do we balance time and money? Let's talk about the first one here. I have the money, but I don't have the time. My wise business coaches told me, you get what you schedule. If it's not on the calendar, it's not going to happen. If your to-do list is a mile long, well, we need to talk about that. There needs to be some prioritization of those. And you have to work to create that time because everyone's given the same 24 hours in a day. Whether it's hiring somebody to help you, bringing in an executive assistant, whatever it is, however busy, you, clearly you have money as a resource, use it as a tool to thus create the time. The answer to the time equation isn't, okay, I, I can take two weeks off of doing nothing here, uh, I'm gonna take two weeks off and cram and get my private pilot certificate done. It, that can't be done. I, I, I'm just sitting here telling you that, that probably cannot be done. You'll end up more stressed anyways with your two weeks, if your check ride gets delayed, now you're 15 days into it, we thought you are only 14 days into it. That only creates more stress than anything. If you have finances as a tool and resource, use it as the tool that it is to create more time through extra hands, through uh, business architecture and operating systems, whatever that actually takes. Now, what's the flip of this? I have the time, Jason, but I don't have the money. This was, this was my battle cry early on as well. Let me tell you something. The whole Shepard family stepped up. You know, I, I don't come from, from money. We were middle class at, at best growing up. Uh, my parents have a humble little pest control business. My mother was a, a, a nurse, as I, as I shared with you. And I'll tell you, 
When it came time to, I knew this was my dream and my parents believed so much in my dream that my dad was offering pressure washing services to his pest control clients to pressure wash their driveways to make extra money. And he said, Jason, any pressure washing business I sell, you come out and help me and we'll use the money towards your flight training. I got a job at a local paintball field as a referee and they paid me 40 bucks a day. And to, to me, that was a lot of money back then. So I'd work a weekend. Here, I just told you I didn't work weekends. I, I had to hustle then, right? Uh, I was in school, I was in high school uh, then. So it was high school, Monday through Friday, Saturday and Sunday at the paintball field to make 80 bucks a week, essentially. Which back then, 80 bucks almost got you a flight lesson with your instructor and fuel. A little Cherokee 140 I was flying was somewhere in the low hundreds, 100 an hour, 105 an hour, something like that. So that was, that was a flight lesson between pressure washing driveways with dad in the evenings, everything else. We just hustled to make it work. When I became an airport bum, I would sweep out hangars. I would wash airplanes. You know, it's interesting. Washing airplanes is such a niche business. If you own an airplane, you know this, or, or, or aspire to own an airplane, you know this. You can't just go hire some gentleman or lady who details cars and expect them to know how to detail an airplane. I made that mistake, and they were spraying water all on the static port and down the pitot tube and everything else. I said, no, no, no. You got to know aviation a little bit. So having somebody like yourself has some aviation experience to detail airplanes on the weekends and making some money that way. Dry wash, wet wash, there's multiple ways to clean an airplane. There's plenty of, <laughs> plenty of YouTube videos on that as well, I am sure. If you have the time but you don't have the money, you have to find the hustle uh, and put in the work to make that happen. I love the idea of odd aviation jobs. I'm amazed at uh, when I'm at the Ocala Airport or when I'm down at Rex Air uh, at the Naples Airport, the line guys and the line gals I meet I would say nine out of 10 line guys and line gals know M0A.com. They come over, they're all excited to fuel the airplane. Oh, Jason, so great, they fuel the airplane, we take a picture, it's, it's wonderful because they're all learning to fly. And they are all smart enough, and this is for line guys and line gals across the whole country, because I run into you all all the time. And if not, we will one day. They're fueling the airplane because they have a passion about aviation and it keeps them involved in aviation. And Ask any line guy, any line gal, line personnel, it's probably the proper term to use, and they will tell you they have made so many contacts, they've met so many great people that say, hey, when you become a pilot, when you get your commercial, when you become an instructor, when you do this, reach out to me. You are networking when you do that sort of stuff. I used to just sit in the FBO and, and drink their free coffee and read Controller Magazine when I didn't have work. And I would just be nosy and listen. And I, if you've met me, I'm not afraid to talk to anybody or butt into any conversation. I am a, a social butterfly when it comes to that. So I, I would happily go over there. And you know what else I would do? Is it, now we're sharing funny stories I've never really shared before. There's always, at every FBO, there's always a board of like airplanes for sale. I would call all those people that were selling their airplanes. Um, not because I could afford to buy their airplane, but because I'd offer to clean their airplane. Hey, I saw your airplane's for sale. I just want to make sure it is spotless when that right buyer comes around to see it. You know, the market's really hot right now. It's also a little competitive right now uh, with supply and demand. Uh, would you like me to do a detail on your aircraft? It's, uh, it's a one-time fee of $300. Uh, it's going to take me all day, but I'll bring all my own materials. I'm willing to do it for you right there in your hangar. And I would do that. I was getting practice and cold calling right there. Who, I wasn't running M0A just yet. I, I was just, uh, but I was sure learning how to do sales, even back then. Between knocking on doors to pressure wash driveways and cold calling people to clean their airplanes they were trying to sell, um, there are ways to make it work, M0A Nation. Somehow I got into making money. I, I, this, whole, this whole lesson, this whole podcast is supposed to be all about getting the most out of your flight training. Maybe it was more so getting the most out of aviation in general. I hope you enjoyed my unscripted little rant, though I, I appreciate you. I appreciate your comments on, uh, on everything. Hey, uh, if you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, will you leave me a comment below? What are some of your ways that you're finding to get the most at your flight train or to make the dream work? We, we took a left turn there and talked a lot about making the dream work. Would you share a little bit about that? How are you working so diligently to make your dream happen? Emissary Nation, you make our dream happen. I don't feel like I have a job. 
I mean, ask Coach Ray, ask Tom. They edit this thing. Coach Ray, Tom, do you guys feel like you have a job? I mean, it's, it's pretty cool what we get to do. Coach, you can feel this especially. Coach Ray edits the video aspect of this, who just finished the 31 Day Safer Pilot Challenge. And if you ever need a little inspiration, go read the comments on day 31. Y'all are some good people. And it's a blessing to do business with you all. I wish you abundance in everything that you choose to pursue. If we can be of any service to you at any level, please never hesitate to reach out. Have that abundant, blessed, amazing rest of your day. And most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you.